Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In our previous video, we have learned about the concepts of extreme learning machines and also the code which we can develop for our own models. If you have not yet seen the video, you can find the link of the video in the description. So to develop our models, we will use the concepts of our other two videos which we discussed about normalization and error calculation. The links to those videos are available in the description. In the current video, we will try to predict one day ahead discharge values using precipitation and previous discharge. So let's directly go into our model. If you remember from the previous video, the first line in our code is the main component which governs the whole code and it helps us to give the data as an input and also get the data as output. So what I did a small change in this line is here if you remember we have the testing time, training time and accuracy as you see here in this line. I have just removed those uh, elements because I am not interested in it. So I have only the values of our testing output and our training output. So you can remove those uh, components and save it so that you have only these so after removing uh, the unnecessary things the next thing is uh, to set our data so that we can start developing our model so unlike other data preparations in this code for our elm model we need to put the target data the target of our model in the first column and the remaining elements in the second third and so forth columns so if you see here this is the discharge values which I'll be using as a target for our model. And if you see uh, the values in column 1 and column 3, you can see that the values in column 1 are one day ahead of the values in column 3. So this column 3 values are our present day discharge tomorrow, day after tomorrow and so on. Whereas the first column values are from tomorrow. So what I'm trying to tell the model is use the present data values and try to predict tomorrow's discharge. So I have placed the one day ahead data in the first column and remaining precipitation and present day's discharge in the second and third columns. So after the data is prepared, now in this video we will uh, develop the model in two scenarios to see the difference of a normalized data and non-normalized data. So for the first model we will use the data directly without doing any normalization and to see how the model is performing in both the cases. Once uh, we got this in our mind the next thing is to divide the data into training and testing. So in generally we can do a 70-30 ratio which in this scale I will approximate it as 3000 values as our training and 1720 values as testing. So if you see here I've already written the line saying what is the training and testing data. So we'll go through this and see how it works. So the first value here if you remember and if you see in this code this is our training data file. So what I'm writing here is I'll ask the model to take the first one to three thousand values as the training as you see here and the next values as our testing values. So the first thousand are given as training and 3001 to 4720 is given as our testing. The next thing we need to give here is what is the ELM type. So here in this code there are two types of ELMs that is a regression model and a classification model. As we are using the data for our time series analysis we will use the regression model. So we will give the value as 0 and the next 10 represents here the number of neurons. You can uh, give the number of neurons based upon the number of variables you are having or you can try it out with varying number of neurons as a trial and error method. So for this case I am just giving it a value of 10 to see how it is performing. For the next value here we are giving an activation function of sign as if you see in the code we have varying number of activation functions like sigmoidal, sine, hard limit, triangular bias and radial bias. So for this case I am giving a simple sine function to see how the model is performing. So that is what this first line denotes. Whereas if you remember the error code from our previous videos, this code is used for calculating various error components. So what I am writing here in this line is I am asking to go into this code and compare this training data which is in the first column if you see remember the first column is our target for training and y here is the result 
of the model after training so i am trying to compare the training value here and i am asking the code to give me all the error components in the next case with er2 i am comparing the results of the model for the testing case with the values of our observed values so these three lines are the code which we'll be using for running the model so if we select the code and right click it we can evaluate the code one thing you need to keep in mind before evaluating is you should remember the name of the code which is used here and also you should be in the same path so that your code runs successfully so once i evaluate it if you see here it is already run because the cursor is not uh, invisible and also here we got our error value so if we see the train Training value, you can see that the correlation is very very less, which is 0.03, which is uh, I would say is a very bad correlation. And if we go to our uh, testing value, you can see that it is in negatives. It is in zero almost. So based on this result, if we see that if we use the data directly without normalization, due to the difference in digits, let's say these values are in 0.01 and maximum of two digits. Whereas the discharge can go up to a maximum of three digits. So the model is not able to understand correctly about converting of these values because it does not know that this is precipitation and discharge as it is doing a data analysis. So that is the reason why we generally do our normalization. So if you remember our normalization video, this is the code which we used for normalization and this is the line which we will use to perform normalization of our data so the first thing we will do is we will remove all the results because we did not get good results we'll use only the main data and we'll use clc here so now we need to use this line to normalize the data so i have already written that here and if you see here normalization of this is the data i want to normalize and what are the number of columns we have three so if you see here the data name and number of data you want to normalize so i'll use that line just before the previous code which i used and i'll change the name of the data because here the output we get if we run this line can show you you see here we get normalized data normal data is our normalized value you see here these are all normalized from 0 to 1 and we will use this data now for our model the only thing you need to change here is put normal in front of the data so that the code takes the values from normal data. So now if we put normal data here and if we run our code of these three lines we can see here the code has already run and if we see our training value we can see a correlation of 0.65 which is still not the very best but 0.65 is a good correlation compared to a 0. Point something which we got in our previous value without normalization. So we can say 65% of the data is following the pattern. This is for our training. And once if we go to our testing, we can see here that correlation of our testing data is better because our training data was done well. So we got a 68% of our correlation and the RMSE values are very less which refers to the error component is very less in our data. So based on this observation, we can say that this data can be used with a confidence limit of 68% because that is the correlation which, which is following. So if we want to improve the correlation higher, one thing we can do here is, as you remember here, I have given a value of 10 for our neurons but one thing we can do here is we can apply a for loop to check the best possible hidden neuron value and use that value so for that what we can do is we can write a for loop so what i am doing here is i have written for of 1 is to 20 neurons i being the number of neurons and i'm saving the values for each neurons by using all rows comma ith column so when i is equal to 1 the results are saved in the first column for all the parameters and if i is equal to 2 the values are saved in the second column so in this way we save all the 20 results so that we can see the errors of our 20 values and another change we do here is instead of specifying the number of neurons as 1 or 2 we specify it as i so that it changes for every run with 1 to 20 values and to find the best value so for getting the error values of our training, what we can do here is we can put the values of t and say here normal data. 
for both the values because we are using the normal data and we use 1 is to 3000 values so that we get our result so if you see here the major differences I, which i have changed is i have put i value instead of the value of number of neurons and i'm saving all the results here. another thing we will change here is also the value of y here because here we are seeing the values of training so instead of using ty we use a value of y so that we can compare it to the observed values of the first 3000 values so after we have done this the another thing we need to do is is to remove all the values because we will be performing the same analysis but with different number of i values that is we will have different number of column values here so we need to remove those values of t ty and the other uh, values if we see here we can only put data and normal data here and we can just remove everything and now what we can do is we can just run these lines so that we can get the values of each a neuron and get them saved in this different training and validation so in order to prevent or uh, to show these kind of values we can put a colon here so that when you run this again let's say if we see here so it shows only these values and you get the results directly so now if we see our training values we can see here that there are 20 values which are observed here for each uh, neuron and if you see here initially the values were not good but as the time passed they were better values and the best value which we obtained in training was at the 20th neuron which is 0 0.6936 but we cannot take the best neuron value in training as the best one because we need to check the validation part as well so if we see the validation part the best value can be observed at 10 neurons which is 0 0.6898 whereas the training error at 10 neurons is 0 0.6555 so based on these results we can determine that the 10th neuron is the best uh, value for taking uh, in this case with this type of data set so this is how you can uh, develop this elm model for prediction of one day ahead discharges although this results uh, is around 0 0.65 if you want to have a better value it is advisable to take more dependent variables like uh, other variables like temperature or pressure or soil moisture and other elements which govern the discharges so based on these uh, dependent values we can develop a model which can give you a better result so this is how you can develop the ELM model using this code so that is it for this video if you like the content please give a like subscribe to the channel and share it with friends whom you think it's useful